just a small 7 billion parameter model and if you can do this this is pretty amazing there is a new large language model called wizard lm uh, which shows that the size of the model doesn't really matter they showed that even a small model like this with only 7 billion parameter can outperform models like chat gpt on certain complex instruction following tasks today we are going to be talking about this new model called wizard lm an instruction following LLM using Evolve Instruct. This model is very impressive because the author showed that even though it's just a 7 billion parameter model, it can outperform models like ChatGPT on certain very high complexity tasks. To train powerful large language models, you need access to a huge amount of open domain instructions. However, manually creating such instruction data is very time consuming and labor intensive task. Moreover, humans may struggle to provide high complexity instructions. Without going into too much technical detail, the main contribution of this work is this new method called Evolve Instruct that uses large language models instead of humans to automatically mass produce open domain instructions of various difficulty levels. If you recall, chat GPT is trained through a process called reinforcement learning with human feedbacks. So in this case, they replace the human with another large language model. The Evolve Instruct method starts with an initial set of instructions and uses the proposed Evolve Instruct uh, to rewrite them step by step into more complex instructions. Then all the generated uh, instruction data is mixed to fine-tune uh, LAMA models and the resultant model is called Wizard LM. Although the model size is pretty small, but using this technique, the results are really impressive and they are on par with much larger models. Now, before showing you some examples, let's look at the training data. So in this case, the training data contains only 70,000 instruction following data generated from instruct evolve method. And the way uh, it's done is you have very detailed instructions so it describes the ta task the model should perform uh, and each one of them is very unique. And then you have the output or the answer that was generated by ChatGPT. So in this paper, they tested this model along with Alpaca, Wakunia, and ChatGPT on these different tasks, including math, code generation, writing, computer science, and there's entertainment, art, music, even philosophy and chemistry. And the results are pretty impressive. Now, in general, when they compared the performance, it outperformed models like Alpaca 7 billion parameter model and Wakunia 7B easily. But uh, overall, uh, ChatGPT performs better than uh, Wizard LM. However, when they looked at more complex tasks which involved a more complex instruction following, it seems to outperform uh, ChatGPT as well. Now, that in itself is extremely impressive given that it's a very small model. Now, this indicates that for very specific tasks, we might be able to train task specific models to outperform. Uh, much bigger generalized models. By this, what I mean is, imagine a model specifically trained on only mathematics. The, that model can be much smaller, but it will outperform models like uh, ChatGPT or even GPT-4 because they, those are more general models and not trained on a specific uh, task. Now, before looking at some examples, let's look at how it was fine-tuned. Uh, so in this case, they're using a batch size of uh, 64 with initial uh, lama 7b the great thing about this is the maximum length so 2048 is the maximum token size now let's look at how you can use this wizard of language models now on their website they have provided a couple of examples of where it outperforms chat gpt so for example in this case uh, the model was instructed to provide latex code to create a table right and it's able to do it along with the detailed instructions ChatGPT is not able to do that, and it results in a number of bugs. Uh, but we are going to be looking at our own tests and compare the performance between ChatGPT as well as uh, Wizard LM. So let's get started. Now you can actually run this locally as well using uh, text web UIs such as Babuga. I'm going to be creating videos on those, so uh, check those out. But in this case, they have provided a web demo if you just want to experiment with it. So there is demo one, demo two. Let's open one of them. Okay, so let's uh, run a few tests on this model. The first one is just idea generation. So uh, this is a prompt that I found online. Create a list of three startup ideas in the B2B SaaS 
the the startup ideas should have a strong and uh, compelling mission and also use AI in some way. And we wanted to avoid cryptocurrency or blockchain. So let's see what it comes up with. I'm going to run the same prompt on ChatGPT as well. Here for ChatGPT, we know that it's pretty good. Uh, it can come up with some really nice ideas. Okay, so here are the three ideas uh, that they, it came up with. Alpha Mine, Alpha Logics, and Alpha Tech. For some reason, it added Alpha in all three of them. The first one is a SaaS platform that helps businesses streamline their sales process by providing a personalized sales assistant. Okay. A sales platform that helps businesses automate the logistic and supply chain processes. The AI powered platform using machine learning algorithm to optimize delivery routes, reduce transportation costs, and improve inventory management. And the third one, it's a SaaS platform that helps businesses improve their customer service by providing an AI powered chatbot. Okay, all of them are pretty good ideas. Now, on the other hand, ChatGPT came up with, I think, a more diverse, so in this case, it says Brain Boost AI, a Clever Mind AI, and Eureka AI. Uh, and I actually checked, so there is a company called Brain Boost and Clever Mind. Okay, next up, let's uh, look at the stability code. We're going to start a very simple prompt, and then we will add more to this prompt uh, to see how complex it can get. So the prompt is, write an HTML code for a website with a single button that when pressed changes the color of the background to a random color, right? So let's submit this and let's see what it comes up with. Uh, so here is the code and there's a small explanation as well. So that's pretty nice, but let's check it out whether it actually works or not. Uh, okay, so I'm going to copy this. So I'm using this um, online editor for HTML code. I'm going to paste the code here, run this, right? So there is a button and it says change color. Okay, well, that's awesome. That's simply amazing. Uh, most of the um, other uh, large language models that I have used, they actually have struggled, well, they struggle with this, but this is pretty neat. All right, so I gave the same prompt to ChatGPT. Usually it doesn't have any issues with this type of code, so let's copy this. I already pasted the code, I believe, but let me check. Okay, so this is the updated code from ChatGPT. Uh, let's run this and yeah, it works. That's, that's pretty awesome. Now, let's make the things a little bit more complex. So apart from changing the background of the web page, it has to generate a random joke as well when the button is pressed. Let's see uh, what kind of code it can come up with. Okay, so we got the code. Uh, this seems to work. So it says the, this code generates, um, creates a simple web page with the button that changes the background color to a random color when clicked. It also displays a random joke after two seconds using JavaScript. I do see a small issue, but let's see uh, if we can make this work. All right, okay, so here is the website. Yeah, it's changing the color, but it's not uh, changing the joke. Okay, I do see a small issue. I think I need to make a small fix to it. The problem here is you cannot really uh, chat with it, so you cannot tell it that uh, you made a mistake and uh, to fix it, but I'm going to do that manually and it's a very really easy fix. Okay, the whole, the main logic was there, the code was there, I just had to make a small change, so I removed the two seconds um, timeout and just added uh, the code generation part here, so whenever the button is click, that code segment is going to be called, right? So let's see, and it works like a charm. This is pretty amazing. Uh, and like sometimes it doesn't change it because it's randomly picking the uh, joke, but that's fine. Um, it's, I think it's really impressive. Just a small 7 billion parameter model. And if you can do this, this is pretty amazing. Now let's look at uh, ChatGPT as well. I don't think ChatGPT is going to have any trouble with this. Okay, so here's the code generated by ChatGPT. Just copy the code, go back here, and let's run this. Uh, I would say I actually like the uh, layout that was generated by Visit LM more than ChatGPT by default, but uh, this works. This is pretty awesome. Now, just the last test whether you can get uh, anything mildly controversial out of it or not. So I asked it why the Republican Party is better than a Democratic Party. And if you ask the same question uh, from uh, ChatGPT, it will simply give you a very canned response. In this case, uh, at least it said that uh, as a language model, I don't have a personal belief or uh, political affiliation. However, 
here are some reasons why some people may believe that Republican Party is better than Democratic Party. And then it came, comes up with the things that are simple Republican are talking points, right? So fiscal policy, national security, abortion, gun rights, uh, economic policy, right? I ask the same thing about Democratic Party, so as to keep everybody happy, right? And in this case, it highlighted issues like social issues, environmental protection, economic policies, healthcare, and foreign policy. These are uh, the normal talking points from both poly uh, both parties. At least this visit LM model uh, give you the talking points. Models like ChatGPT, uh, GPT-4, or even Vacunia. So they are highly restricted, and they don't even they they won't even go there and and highlight some of the talk the respective talking points. So here we wrap up yet another video on uh, another large language model. Uh, things are moving fast every day. There are new developments, new models are being released, and all of these open source models add uh, to the collective advancements of uh, language models in general. Now, uh, one thing I want to point out, like these are nowhere near the performance of ChatGPT or GPT-4. However, if you think about it, I would say like just a few months ago, nobody uh, even thought that it's possible to have an open source large language model, uh, which is even comparable to ChatGPT. And now we have like so many of them, they definitely they have their limitations, but I believe this is um, a step in the right direction. And these will improve over time with better quality training data and then like even better training techniques like this uh, Evolve Instruct. I hope you liked the video. If you're new here, consider subscribing to the channel. If there are any questions, please put them in the comments. I'll try my best to uh, answer each and every one of them. Well, thanks for watching. See you in the next one.